live. I uh, want to let you know we are streaming live right now across social media channels, including LinkedIn, Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, and Twitch. Be sure to like and subscribe on the social media platform you're using. And uh, so you can stay in the loop when we do go live. We want you to get involved. Talk to us. Talk to others. We'd love to see that right now. Watching chat come in. Rami, love you too. Bob, Bob, glad you're enjoying all the changes that we've got going on. Sean, moving over from a competitor uh, to INE. And i uh, love to see that as well. So that's great. We're monitoring chat. If you have a comment, drop it in. If you have a question, go ahead and put a cue right in the beginning so we can find those questions easily. And we'll get to as many as we can today. Uh, with that, Richard and Neil, along with Mike Pfeiffer, who is the founder of cloudskills.io here with us today. Thank you so much for being here, all of you. Richard, I'm going to turn it over to you first. Hey, great to be here. Um, really excited about uh, the announcement here with cloudskills.io. Mike is a, just a great person and has created a great catalog of cloud training and super excited to uh you know, announce this today and get this in the platform. Awesome. All right. So, uh, Richard, I, I know that um, this is this is a project that you, along with uh, a number of other people here uh, at INE, have been working on. But can you give us a sense of, of how long this has been in the works and just kind of a base level what this means um, for for the INE platform? Uh, how long it's been in the works? I, I would say sometime <laughs> mid last year, specifically with Mike. But I think like. When we um, have really been trying to accelerate our catalog and build out a, you know, a more comprehensive set of training, uh, we really started, you know, deep in our networking roots. And, you know, we really saw the transition from a lot of on-prem into on-cloud. And we knew cloud was going to be impactful. And then we had some opportunities to get into the cybersecurity space, uh, which a lot of the training in the cyber side as well is, is cloud, uh, a lot dealing with cloud services with AWS and Azure, et cetera. Um, and so when we when we came across uh, with Mike and his portfolio and his podcast and his community, it really resonated with us. And we, we knew we had to get Mike on the team and we knew it would be great for, for our students and, and cloud skills students uh, if we could come together and, and make something work. here. And uh, we're certainly glad that we have Mike want to bring you in here uh, as well. Just to first of all, welcome you to the INE family and. Um, you know, just just uh, we're we're thrilled to have Cloud Skills uh, now under the INE umbrella. Thanks, Catherine, and thanks, Richard. I'm thrilled to be here and thrilled to be part of INE. Uh, it's been uh, you know a long process, and the problem that we've been trying to solve, I think, you know, at INE and at Cloud Skills, is obviously aligned. And uh, I'm just so excited to you know tackle this together. And you know, in my mind, I'm thinking let's redefine cloud training and the way people experience it. Yeah, and and that's something that we at INE have been talking about for a long time, Neil. I know I, I've spent uh, uh, countless hours with you um, over the past year talking about how important it is to double down on uh, cloud training here at INE. How 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 are you feeling right now as as chief content officer, um, having you know 261 hours of content uh, among among other things, all of a sudden uh, now part of the platform. Yeah, I mean, I, I think it goes without saying, like, this has been one of the, the most exciting uh, acquisitions that, that I've been really, really dying to, to tell everybody about. I've teased a number of times. Um, I, I've, I've said it before. I said it at Redefine. I've said it on, on streams that you and I have had in the past, Catherine, that, that cloud is something you can't ignore anymore. We've joked about it. And, and I remember, Mike, when you and I chatted, um, you know, a, a couple months ago when we had you on, uh, on INE Live last time, talked about everybody's migration over into cloud first. And so for us to really, again, double down and wholeheartedly commit to, to being the, the, the best at being able to make experts um, for, for folks in the cloud space and to be able to do that with, my, with Mike's partnership and with the content that, that he and his team have created over at Cloud Skills, um, I, I am over the moon excited for what this means for INE, and, and I couldn't be prouder to have my part of the team. And you sound even more excited and hyped up than you normally do, uh, Neil. So is that, that possible? Really is that possible? <laughs> <laughs> Hey, it's, listen, uh, listen. What it, what it what it is is there's there's an excitement to people who are passionate like Mike. Like I've had the I've had the joy, and, and Richard talks about middle of last year when we started talking with Mike and. 
when you when you listen to a guy who's, who's passionate about Mike, that's passionate about learning, who's as knowledgeable in the area as it is, and you marry that up with the culture and the content that we have here at INE already between Richard's vision for, you know, you know, accessible training across the board and, and how we just we, we, we are excited to get the learner as much experience, as much knowledge as possible. I got, you know, of, yeah. Yeah, you, you believe I'm hyped. I'm, I'm incredibly hyped about this. This is, a, this is a guy who fits right in here and the content is perfect for our portfolio. Yeah, we've, we've seen that resonate. Um, absolutely. In the, in the um, relatively short amount of time um, that I've known you, Mike, I, I certainly can see that passion. How are you feeling uh, today? This announcement came out yesterday. It's, like, it's a pretty big week yeah. for you. It's uh, it's been a welcome like surprise because it kind of felt like it already happened because I've known this is coming. But now that we've said it, it feels really good to you know get out there and just like let everybody know what we've been you know planning. And uh, and I'm even more excited to build the next you know version of the cloud content that we're working on. Um, we all know that cloud moves fast, and uh, that's one of the challenges of keeping up as a student as a learner. And uh, I feel like we're uniquely positioned, you know, since we're uh, t collectively able to do, you know, pre-recorded content and boot camps and labs. It's so critical. And you need all of those different elements, in my view, to be able to actually learn this stuff because it's a lot of content and it's, uh, it's changing very frequently. So anyways, I'm just thrilled to, you know, be on a team that understands what I've always thought was the right move and to have the support and to be surrounded by people that, are just as passionate about um, technology as I am and helping others, you know, uh, amplify their careers in tech. Uh, it's going to be awesome. There's going to be a, lots of amazing career stories uh, in the years to come. Mike, yeah, Mike I want to... Go ahead, Neil. Go ahead. I was going to say, Mike, I want to jump in here because when you talk about that, there was a conversation that you and I had a couple months ago when we um, kind of, you know, during the acquisition, we talked about bringing on board Pentester Academy. And then we talked about some of the content that you had. And we kind of articulated kind of the art of the possible when it came to advancing, you know, the, that kind of that next round of cloud training. Can you kind of talk through, you know, what your take was on those conversations and how that kind of shaped your vision for what you see as the future of, of cloud training here at INE? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I think that that's another place where we are all very well aligned. Um, I, when we all look at the industry, we can see clearly that people are getting pulled into multiple cloud platforms. You know, sometimes they're doing it intentionally and other times they're just getting pulled in. And, uh, you know, the vendor certs are amazing to go get a specific, you know, cloud platform certification as administrator, developer, architect, things like that. Uh, but we all know that the people that are really, you know, going to get the the great jobs, the right kind of salary, they're going to be people that are in the cloud space, good with dealing with ambiguity. And uh, I think that with what we're planning to, you know, enable uh, everybody to be able to work on multiple cloud platforms and see the common patterns across different things, um, it's just, you know, it's what the industry needs because we, you know, the industry has done a pretty good job of, okay, here's the cloud, here's the basic job roles. And I think that what I'm excited about, um, probably more than anything is the opportunity to come in here and, uh, and, and level that up a bit and then, you know, give the industry really what it needs, which is clarity about what it feels like chaos most of the time. So. Yeah, Mike, you um, you have actually a, a really amazing story about how you got into, you know, started your journey, and um, I want to get into that and and really spend some time getting to know you a little bit better and and letting everyone who's watching, um, just get to know you and and kind of what you're all about. Um, before we get into that though, I, I do want to take a moment and really address something that that a lot of people have questions about, which is natural. Um, when there's an acquisition announcement, and that's what what does this mean um for me, right? not for me, obviously, but for customers, for INE. So what does this mean? Um, and, and Richard, you and Mike, uh, you know, and Neil can, can all weigh in on this, but um, you know, what does this mean for INE customers? Let's just start there. Yeah, for so current INE subscribers, they're gonna have access to, as you mentioned, I think it's 44 courses uh, today are on the platform, over 261 hours of content. Um, I think it also means that, you know, Mike is joining as kind of the director of our of our cloud content. And so I think it also means a vision and a future for cloud as we push out new labs and um, as we eventually kind of lead to that into certifications as well. Uh, so I think a huge, a huge uh, benefit to the current INE uh, audience and INE customers. 
And, yeah, you know, so I, I would say on, on Mike's side, you know, you know, finding, finding really great instructors uh, is, is very difficult as we've learned over, you know, I've been here 13 years plus and, and finding, finding people who know the material is, is, is one thing and that's very hard. And then finding people who can really uh, resonate with students and learners and kind of translate that material into kind of knowledge for the student is, is very difficult. And I would say, um, you know, part of that acquisition process was, was talking to students, uh, talking to some of the students at cloud skills and, and really hearing that fashion and that resonate. I mean, that is, that is absolutely what we look for. Um, and so really glad, you know, just to circle back to, you know, I think adding Mike to the team is, is a huge benefit to, to all the current I need, uh, students as well, uh, in terms of, you know, d diving deeper on cloud and, uh, as we go kind of cross cross domain into some of the security things and having them in, in those communications and, and seeing the teams interact, I think is a huge benefit across the board. Yeah, I'm watching chat right now uh, coming in, just uh, reiterating what you said about the instructors um, and and how INE has found and identified some of the most incredible instructors and just um, love to see all these uh, excited comments coming in, people uh, understanding and you know getting it that this, this is really great news. Neil and, and Mike, for you guys, um, maybe you can both weigh in on this. It's fair to say that, that for current INE customers, this just means a lot more content, a lot, you know, you're getting better content, you're getting a lot more of it right away. Is that fair? Absolutely. I think I think what what you're really seeing and, and to the, the numbers that Richard put up in terms of of how much content that this adds to the portfolio with with cloud skills, I think that that's really the drive here is we're really trying to to keep a, a steady flow of content coming into to the learner. And, and, and as Mike pointed out, when we talked about multi cloud, and we've seen this as we have conversations about cybersecurity, uh, development, networking and cloud, there's a need for this consistent amount of education across all the dis disciplines. Cybersecurity folks definitely need to know cloud technologies. Cloud practitioners absolutely need to know cybersecurity concepts. Um, that that is key to every technologist learning as this as this you know IT world that we see continues to expand. And so by being able to continue to add volumes of content like what we get at Cloud Skills, it literally benefits everybody who is who is a, a current or future subscriber of INE by being able to give them something that they need to continue to progress their career, regardless of what their discipline is. And, and so that's part of the excitement is that we're continuing to add the value to the portfolio um through these types of acquisitions and through these types of, of content expansions so that regardless of where you are in your journey whether you're an entry level whether you're an architect whether you're cybersecurity or cloud or, or networking there is something that will make you an expert and make your career better and that's the part that really really excites me yeah you know, also uh, say it's not just about the, 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 i would say it's not oh, just about the was, content as well but it's yeah. also the technologies that that Mike has kind of put together at Cloud Skills are very relevant in today's you know workspace. Like uh, you know you have Kubernetes, you have Linux for cloud, you have Terraform, you have all the, you know a lot of these ancillary technologies that kind of make up what is you no know, cloud. So I think that um, a lot of these technologies are very relevant in today's space, and and it's really great to have not just a, a quantity of, of of training, but also very relevant and quality training as well on top of that. So I think it's it's a huge benefit to the students. Now, now Mike, you're, saw, the last um, one to, you're, you're the last one to chime in on this one. What are kind of your thoughts on it? Absolutely, yeah. I'll, uh, one of the things that I'll share is that, and stop me if I start sharing too much, you guys. Um, <laughs> but, uh, we'll just mute you. We'll just mute yeah, right, There you go. Um, but we're already, you know, on my team, we're already mapping out certification paths, learning paths. And I think with the lab platform and the content that we're building, also still building, you know, we're hiring as well, adding to the team. But I think that what we're going to do is work through these learning paths and these certification paths and put something out for all INE subscribers that's completely unique, something you've never seen before, um, especially with the way that we're going to be able to integrate cloud labs. And I just know from experience of teaching so many people cloud over the last five, six years, uh, even longer than that, um, that hands-on obviously is a huge piece to this. And not being able to give people those experiences has always been a big blocker um, for everything that we've done. And I'm really pumped about the lab capabilities. I'm excited about my team and the content we're mapping out. Um, it's not easy to continuously build content, but it's really interesting because, you know, it, 
as educators, we got to continuously build content and continuously learn. And then learners will need to do that as well. And I think that, um, you know, collectively we can share some of that, um, those sidebar conversations in things like I need live cloud skills, FM podcasts, things like that, um, where people get a sense for it. But that's, um, from my perspective, what it really means for INE subscribers is that, you know, you've got some seriously cool training coming and I promise it will not disappoint. And while, while you're on the, in the hot seat, Mike, um, want to dig into uh, your role here at INE just a little bit more. Uh, NASCO UK was uh, writing comments, what will Mike's role be at INE? And Richard alluded to that, but um, can you talk a little about what, what you'll be doing here specifically and what some of your goals are? Yeah, absolutely. So I'm going to be, as Richard said, director of cloud content, and um, we'll be building the instructor team. We've already got a couple of great instructors, Brooks Seahorn, uh, Matt Davis. You know, these guys are insanely capable technologists. Like I said, we're still building out the team, but my job is essentially going to be to kind of quarterback the cloud program, um, make sure that we understand what's coming, what the gaps are uh, in our current content, and then closing those gaps. You know, we want to be able to uh, set up a situation where, you know, if you want to dive deep in AWS, you could do that, but you can also follow our path, which is, you know, multi-cloud certified at whatever level you deci uh, decide to do that. So administrator, architect, DevOps engineer, developer, uh, and on and on. So that's my responsibility is to kind of see those opportunities, um, build the library out so it supports all those tracks and then, you know, keep building labs and, uh, and, and rolling feedback in from the community as well. Cause to be honest, some of the feedback that we get from students, uh, makes the content much better. So those are the things that's, you know, I'm going to be focused on and building an incredible team and getting into a clip where we're just pumping out content constantly. And that's another thing. I'm so glad to hear you say that, Mike, that's another thing that, um, is such a good synergy between cloud skills and INE is that, um, the the value that is put into feedback you know the value of listening to the people who are using the content and saying oh you know maybe we do need to tweak this or okay this is really um, hitting home for a lot of people let's dig into this a little bit more um so it, great things great things on the way for i and e customers um and uh you know for others too and that's what i want to get into right now and richard and mike um this is for you to kind of tag team but um i'm a cloud skills customer i'm watching right now uh what does this mean for me? So if you're a cloud skills customer right now, you've probably, you know, bought an individual course or you have an annual subscription that could be active. And what we're going to do is we're going to follow up with everybody and let you know what is going to be the path into INE. And everybody, you know, that's in that situation, they have different offers and different kind of situations. So we're going to do an amazing job following up with everybody. And then we're going to create a path um, into INE. So that's the good news. Um, what I need to do on my end is I just need to sort everything out and get those notifications out to everybody, but that's the game plan. So, you know, my vision is to bring everybody that we've got at cloud skills over with us and, and make everything work. And, you know, I believe that, um, you know, with, uh, the success that we've had at cloud skills and our vibrant and passionate community, um, I really feel like, you know, that's just going to transfer right over to I and E. Richard, what do you say to cloud skills customers right now who are hearing this news, um, seeing Mike's you know enthusiasm and bringing people over, but may say, wait, wait a minute, I you know I don't know about this. What do, what do you say to them? Yeah, I think that uh, I think you know the operation and, and and what we have. I mean, if you look back just a, a few months when we announced uh, Pentester Academy and the platform that we kind of acquired there uh, with Vivek and his team. Um, I think the capabilities now that Mike is going to be able to utilize and all the tools in the tool set now that he can utilize to really create an, an amazing kind of well-rounded cloud training is, is, is going to be incredible. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, I think for those, for those people that were on cloud skills, um, you know, that, that believed in Mike, I think, you know, you can believe in Mike and INE because we are giving him kind of free reins to uh, to drive cloud to the next level here at INE. Yeah, awesome, exciting times ahead, Mike. Uh, I want to get back to you now and your journey because it's it's fascinating. I've gotten to know you a little bit in the last few weeks, and um, I, I just want to kind of let everyone in on the secret that is Mike Pfeiffer. Um, if you can talk a little bit about how you got started on your journey, and um, it, it wasn't wasn't necessarily what you would think is a, a conventional way, but um, just kind of how you how you got started in this and how you, 
identified cloud as an area that you saw a huge opportunity. Sure. Yeah, I definitely I think everybody's got their own unique path and in, into tech, right? Mine kind of took the hard road um, sometimes, but I just started in tech support back in 1999. And I just I realized that, man, you know, I'm obsessed with technology and I had no clue that that was going to happen to me. And uh, I think I was about 22 at the time and uh, I had no prospects. Um, I, you know, wasn't uh, probably wasn't the greatest student. Right. So I kind of dropped out of college. I was wondering, what am I going to do? And then I got into tech support and then I got obsessed with technology. And over the years, you know, I just uh, I would uh, see roles and I'd say, I want to try that out. So I would kind of work towards it. And I've worked over the years in all kinds of different roles. Um, you know, consultant and architect, spent some time as a developer. And then about 10 years ago, I started getting into teaching. Uh, and then I went and worked at Microsoft at Amazon Web Services. Um, but the reason I did that, you know, is probably 2010. I could just see the writing on the wall. Um, you know, virtualization was really picking up. And people, even though it was a long time ago, people were still talking about cloud. And Microsoft was doing a huge investment, you know, back in 2009 for Office 365. And I was doing a lot of uh, enterprise messaging back then. So it was like, hey, this cloud thing is going to be a big deal. And uh, so when I was working at Microsoft, it was a 2012. And I was like, do I do I go on the Azure team and see if this Azure thing is going to be a big deal? Or Amazon's doing cloud. Maybe I should go over there. So in 2012, 2013, I went to AWS because I, fig I figured, you know, Amazon is up to something really interesting. They'd already uh, surprised us with their retail business, you know, a little bit before that. So I figured like it was a safe bet, you know, and I decided to bet on technology and uh, it's paid off big time. Yeah, I, I think the uh, the understatement of the stream so far is uh, clouds, clouds going to be a big deal, right? <laughs> you were, you were right on that one. Yeah, and it's not just like all about me. I think that that opportunity is still here. That's why I'm doing this. Um, that's why I believe in what we're doing at I&E. Uh, everybody has that same opportunity right now. I actually just did a podcast a couple of weeks ago with a guy that um, in 2016, he was working at a gas station and he just accepted a, a job offer at Google as a cloud engineer. <laughs> so that's a pretty amazing trajectory. And three years ago, he was on the help desk, you know, so <clears throat> everybody's going to have a different path and some people will take longer. Right. So, you know, depending on your situation, you may move faster than others, but I truly believe that everybody's got that same opportunity um, to, to right now, you know, that there's so much desperation in the job market for talent. And uh, if you can go in there and show hiring managers that you can help them go fast and that, you know, that you're hungry to learn, uh, I think that everybody's in the same uh, position to have something like that happen as well and have an amazing career. I want to tap into your experience there, Mike, because I think a lot of, you know, while, while everyone's journey is unique, I think what a lot of students can identify with is that sort of uh, bouncing around a little bit early on and saying, I, where do I really fit in? Where do I, there are so many different opportunities um, within the tech space that sometimes nailing down a, a particular point of interest can seem overwhelming. Um, how do you find that direction? How do you pull that passion out within you? Yeah, that's a great question. I'm glad you asked that. Um, one of the things I always used to tell people at cloud skills, and this was kind of like, our informal mantra or uh, catchphrase was start before you're ready. Because, you know, a lot of people are paralyzed by options. There's too much options right now, right? You can do all these things on these different clouds. There's different roles that you could go down. But once you get going, if you just pick something and get in the game, then the lights start coming on. You know, you do some cybersecurity labs and you're like, ah, I don't know if I like that. Maybe I try some, you know, DevOps labs. That's, maybe that resonates a little bit more. So it's experimentation, you know, it's going out there, um, getting your hands on stuff and finding while you're working through it, what's interesting. And one of the things that I used to do was, uh, and I'm sure there's a lot of people listening to this, watching this, that have done this too. Uh, I just find somebody that I see out there that's kind of doing something that I like, and then I'll try it out. And, you know, I'll do, uh, maybe I'll pursue a, an administrator certification or, or a, a developer certification. I'll play around with the, the content. I'll do some labs and then I'll make a decision. Uh, do I like this? Do I like where this is headed? Do I know anybody else that's doing this? That's, you know, having success. And uh, it is a process. It's like finding your own path. And I think that that's the answer is just start before you're ready. I like it. Start before you're ready. Yep. Um, what was it about teaching that 
uh, attracted you that that almost magnetized you to kind of shift your focus and get into more of a, a teaching and instructor role? Hmm. That's a good question. So I was, uh, let's see, 2008. It was the first time I ever went to a training class. I had gone through my whole career pretty much never going to training because most of the places I worked were a consulting company. And they're just like, hey, we sold the project. We need you to go do this. And it's like, I don't know how to do that. And we're like, figure it out, right? Um, <laughs> so like there was never time to go to training. And so in 2008, I went to a class and uh, you know, I think it was Windows Server, like an in, uh, MCSE upgrade. And uh, the guy was awesome. He was like running around the class, writing on the whiteboard. They were rolling all this gear into the classroom. Um, guy's name was Jason Helmick, works at Microsoft, by the way, and uh, program manager at Microsoft these days. And uh, anyways, I saw that guy doing that and I was like, that was insanely cool. <laughs> I was like, I need to learn how to do that. And because I knew that if I could pr present the information and convey it to somebody else, that I would understand it way better. And I was kind of hungry at that time in my career of going deeper. And I realized that, um, and not, you know, going to that class, it's like, hey, there's another level for me. And if I actually learn how to explain this to somebody, I'll be that much more, um, you know, capable working on this technology. And, uh, you know, I just, I had that moment and I felt <laughs> compelled to, to like learn how to do that. And uh, it was not easy, I'll admit, <laughs> but it's worth it. <laughs> so, anybody, anybody watching, you know, it's like, if that resonates at all, uh, it is worth uh, the, the hard work if you're not naturally, um, you know, into teaching. So it's worth it. Very rewarding. Uh, for yeah, sure, I imagine. For, the, for those who are not intimately familiar with cloudskills.io, um, can you just kind of summarize what it is, what it's all about? Absolutely. Um, it's about people, ultimately. It's about community. It's about you know creating opportunities for people. And uh, the way that we started doing that when we first started it was just one boot camp. And uh, we would take people through, help them get certified, but it was kind of a blended experience. You know, we would do live lectures and jump on live calls. There was pre-recorded videos. There was labs people were going through. And there was also, you know, a community where you could just bounce questions off people that are doing the same thing. And that's ultimately what cloud skills was about. It was about people helping each other out, um, everybody, so they could win, you know, going into the tech industry. Awesome. Um, Richard, I, I want to get over to you because this is, um, you know, I and E has mm -hmm. has been uh, fairly aggressive, very aggressive, I would say, um, over its history in terms of acquisitions, in terms of identifying technology and opportunities um, that that will benefit students and businesses um, here at I and E, and then going out and figuring out ways to to bring those into the I and E fold. Um, a couple of years ago, it was E Learn Security. Um, Recently, it was Pentester Academy, um, and, and with that, with both of those, and there were obviously very quickly a number of very obvious, very visual changes uh, to the INE platform. Um, <clears throat> with this acquisition, what can you talk about in terms of actual, visible, physical changes to the platform or the content that people will notice on a day in, day out basis? Uh, yeah, I would say starting today, all the all the content from CloudSkills.io is now available to to people on the platform. So that that is kind of day one. Uh, I would say the the really what we're really looking at is kind of on the vision side of where we can go with this. Um, you know, like you mentioned with with Pentester Academy, and I, I mentioned earlier on the labs. I mean, we have probably the most advanced lab platform in the world. We're offering cloud labs uh, via pentesteracademy.com right now. You can, you know, those there's AWS security labs, container labs, um, but the underlying technology is is what we're going to be utilizing to start adding labs to all of the courses through cloud and through, uh, you know, all of our uh, offerings. So I think that is what we're going to start seeing. And I think as Mike kind of maps out the the paths from what is currently learning paths into a career path for students. I think that's something that they're going to see on the platform and, and Mike's fingerprints all over. So that's what ex excites me is kind of looking out, you know, six to 12 months here of, of what this, what this means for the platform and what this means for the student. Neil, as a, uh, as chief content officer, you know, you're, you're getting your hands dirty on a daily basis with, uh, with a lot of content creation. What do you see in terms of, um, you know, the, 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 the content that 
is already available and how that'll be evolving um, over, you know, in the future with this acquisition. Absolutely. And, and I want to I want to reiterate kind of like like Richard's sentiment, because I think that that's the that's kind of the excitement that that he and I shared is as as we were going about like seeing this this world of hands on advanced lab capability platforms and training unfolding right before our eyes is when you add in somebody like Mike Pfeiffer, who's got an amazing amount of experience, an amazing amount of vision, um, the ability to to look at technology, be able to predict which things are going to be awesome, which things aren't going to be awesome, who's lived, you know, lived in that world and been able to walk that walk be able to take that take somebody with that type of acumen have them be able to you know you know create experts um you know we, you know in the cloud space and then be able to offer him a, a lab platform like what we got with pentester academy which is unmatched compared to anything else that's out there i think what you really start to see is you really start to see an entire company coalesce around a model where we're really bringing you the latest and greatest when it comes to hands-on training, whether it's cloud or cybersecurity, DevOps, development, networking, whatever the case is, and being able to integrate all of that stuff together so that you all have access to, to literally what it needs, what it means for you to be job ready on day one or to be that expert architect or, or, you know, expert pen tester or expert, you know, whatever it is that you're trying to go for in this industry. And you start to see the direction that we're going in, you start to see the vision that we have in terms of being one of the best training companies that's out there. Um, when you talk about my hype, Catherine, as we start to see these pieces fall into place, like I just get so incredibly excited for, for being able to transform everybody's life on a day-to-day -day basis through Mike, through the other instructors that we have out there, through experts like Brooks. And, and it's just, it's amazing. Like, like the hype just begins to flow immensely through me when we think about the future of all this, this coming together. Yeah, that's something that um, I, I think is the lifeblood of INE, and and it sounds like it is for CloudSkills.io as well. Um, it's it's an absolutely great partnership. We've seen that from from an inside uh, perspective, you know. And and Neil, Richard, Mike, I know you guys are are as excited uh, as I am to to share it with everyone else and let everyone else see um, what a great partnership this is going to be. Um, I a few questions coming in from our. Um, on the uh, chat about uh, single cloud versus multi-cloud. I'd love to get all of your <laughs> thoughts on this because um, you know I, I, I know personally that each of you has very, very strong thoughts on this. So I'm just going to, uh, to read out Ricardo Laredo's message. Again, we've had a number of, of questions come in on this, but Ricardo asks, do you believe it's better to focus on a single cloud provider and then go deeper into that cloud domain knowledge or do you believe it would be better from a job perspective to have the overall knowledge about all cloud providers, AWS, Azure, Google, et cetera? Um, Mike, I'd love to start with you here and just get your thoughts on, on that. Yeah, absolutely. It's a great question. You know, I think the, the one thing that I like to recommend is basically you know, having an anchor cloud that you know really well. So I would say start with one because it kind of is like that thing where, you know, if you learn, uh, like, for example, on programming, if you learn JavaScript and PHP isn't that difficult, you kind of see the commonalities. And so if you learn one platform really well, then the next ones, you're going to just see the patterns. You're like, oh, OK, that's how you do VMs on this one, because I know how it works over here. Right. Um, and cloud in general is kind of like that, too, just to throw that in there. You know, if you're working in tech right now and uh, you're not doing cloud and you're like, geez, I got to get into this cloud thing. Well, the good news is a lot of the skills that you're, you currently have could translate over. You know, if you're doing you know, VMware administration, all that stuff with VMs, we still do that in these cloud platforms. So that's kind of the idea is you want to map what you already know to something um, in one of these platforms. And so if you pick one cloud to start with and you get good with that one, maybe you get, you know, um, up to the point where you're comfortable as an administrator with like AWS, for example, then when you go over to Azure, you're going to see the patterns. And uh, that's something we'll help you with as well in the learning paths that we're building. We'll, we'll help you notice those patterns. But yeah, if you get really good with one, then learning the others is a lot easier. What do you think, Neil? Single I, cloud, I, multi cloud, cloud agnostic. I, I, what's your answer? I, I love I love Mike's strategy here. I, I I can't argue with an expert like that. I think you do find your uh, your anchor cloud, as he put, it, and I think it's a fantastic analogy that you use. Um, I think finding that anchor cloud may very well depend on where you're at in your career. You may be in an enterprise where you're currently using AWS, or you may be in an enterprise where you're currently using Azure, and so that anchor cloud may be easier for you based on what your current you know, operating environment is versus maybe if you're a, a new learner or not. And so I would definitely gravitate towards, you know, 
you know, that low hanging fruit to try to decide what that anchor cloud is. Um, and then once you, once you feel like you've got a good solid knowledge of that one, I do think it's easy to transfer for, for that knowledge as you get over into a lot of the other cloud technologies. But I do think it is important that the, the North star on your vision is to be multi-cloud proficient. Um, as you look at modern, uh, you know, modern enterprises, Mike, you know, has got this experience. I've got this experience as well. You know, you they oftentimes start in one enterprise or, or one cloud provider, and then frequently migrate their business models into uh, in, into one of the other two, or even sometimes into all three of them together. Um, and, and that just shows the power of a lot of these enterprises being able to leverage the the redundancy and the resiliency, as well as the capabilities that exist ac across all the cloud, cloud providers. And so, whether you start with one, I think it should be on your roadmap, and it should be on your vision to to be, you know, you know, understanding of all those multi-cloud technologies and how they interoperate together. I just noticed a uh, Neil, it's Mike. I just noticed a message from Ryan that uh, said we lost Catherine for a second. Uh oh. Uh oh, we lost Catherine. Yeah. Okay, uh, I'll, I'll tap. I'll, I'll, I'll tap just follow in. up on that, then, Neil. <laughs> okay, like, go ahead. Uh, go ahead, Richard. <laughs> I, I think that the. Um, you know, if we look at the underlying technologies that exist on these cloud platforms, I think there's a lot of commonality between them all. Um, I think that understanding the underlying technologies of SQL or, uh, you know, as Mike mentioned, you know, virtual machines, I think is, is very important. And, and, and knowing how to deploy those on multi-cloud is also important from a business perspective uh, because they both have their strengths and weaknesses. And um, I think that on a cost perspective, if you're looking at, hey, I want to do nested virtualization. Well, maybe, you know, Amazon's not the right place for that. Maybe Azure is the right place for that. And so, you know, I think as a student, it brings a lot of, of value to an organization to be able to, you know, whether it's in a job interview or, or with your boss to say like, hey, this is why we're choosing this is because it, it, it provides a, a better ROI on the investment here if we choose Azure over AWS. And like, I think what we can offer uniquely uh, in this space is being able to kind of broaden our scope of what we're teaching so that it's not just a one vendor specific cloud training. It's, hey, we want to make sure that you're well-rounded and can make those decisions and can make an impact on the businesses that you that you work at. Does I that think, make sense, uh, Mike? That makes sense to me. I think, um, we're I think I'll on. pick... I'll, yeah. I'll pick up. I'll pick up where Catherine left off because I, I I can see some of the questions that are that are coming through chat here a little bit. Um, you know, maybe another one for you, Mike. Um, you you too as as well, Richard, since you're uh, you've got a traditional networking background as well. Um, Hirano Fago, I apologize if I messed that one up. Says, um, is it really a good idea to drop from Cisco networking and start pursuing cloud certifications? Well, I'll jump in on that one. Um, I, I, you know, I think it's very situational, right? So I wouldn't, I wouldn't say drop Cisco and kind of going back to what Neil said earlier, it kind of depends on where you're at now and what your goals are. You know, if you're working on a networking team and they need you to get Cisco certified or you're working in a Cisco partner and they need that, um, you know, it really is situational. Um, but networking, you can't lose. And that's one of the hardest things in the cloud. So, you know, I don't know if I can answer your question specifically because I think your circumstances, um, you know, obviously dictate that. But networking, being a networking expert, is not going to, you know, be a problem for you because most of the people in the cloud are having a really hard time figuring out the networking. Even people that know, like standard networking, right? They go into the cloud and they're like, hey, this is really, really weird. So, you know, I think if you knew both, you'd obviously be in a much better position, but I don't, I can't say, you know, drop the Cisco when I go to cloud because it kind of depends on where you're coming from. What do you guys think? How, how about you, Richard? What do you think? Yeah, I think, um, I think as Mike mentioned, you know, all these, all these technologies are really interconnected. Um, and if you look at the interconnected of the, you look at these interconnections, right? You go, you go to cloud, you still have networking in cloud and you have, you know, a lot of cloud engineers that kind of get an, an AWS certification, uh, that still don't know IP addressing. Um, and so I think that, you know, I wouldn't say, Hey, uh, I would say like on a, on a comp level, like if you're going to, from a salary perspective, the compensation is probably pretty equivalent, but really just find your passion and what you love. Um, you know, I think that the, this. The Cisco networking stack has a, has a lot of room to grow. Uh, there's going to be on-prem for you know years and years to come. I don't, I see that you know right now we're really looking at kind of a hybrid cloud of, of half on-prem or half in cloud, and and so I think from a career perspective, it's really just what you'd love to do. 
Uh, and, if, and if you love terminals and if you love connecting R3 to R1, uh, <laughs> IP addressing and subnet masking, then, you know, you should stay in network. Um, I, so. I, 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 I love that follow your passion mantra, but I never heard it put so pointedly as, uh, as, as the connectors or the IP address subnet. So, yeah. masking, so, so good on you. And, and, and also, I mean, we, you know, is, is just kind of following up on the, on the networking side, you know, we just released over a hundred, I think, networking labs, mm -hmm. uh, utilizing the the new uh, the new platform as well and uh, I know uh, Rohit just published a course on EIGRP with with uh, online uh, networking labs as well so you know if that question was directed back at us uh, we are we are really uh, increasing the output here on the on the networking side as well so uh, another one over to you, Mike. Um, and, and this one, you know, I know you're, you're trying to temper maybe some of the stuff that's on the horizon because you, you don't want to give too much away. But but I, I, you know, I think it's all right for you to give just a little bit of way to answer this question. But this one came through said, are we getting cloud labs like uh, access to AWS and Azure, just like how cybersecurity labs are in IE right now? Can you talk a little bit about um, maybe some of the labs that you're working on right now with the team, what maybe some vision of some of the labs are and kind of what that looks like with the new lab platform? Absolutely. We actually just did a really cool test um, last week. We did a live test with some students running through some labs that we're working on. So to answer the first part of the question, absolutely. The, the game plan is to get you access to these cloud platforms, just like you're doing with the cybersecurity labs. And uh, the stuff that we're working on right now, we are not only building the lab scenarios, but we're building or writing the code to test those to make sure like in a certification scenario that you completed the objective. So imagine going through an exam where you know, you're doing things hands-on, building, you know, virtual machines, securing S3 buckets and AWS, things like that. Just doing um, standard stuff that an administrator might do, you know, launching VMs, tagging resources, things like that. In a certification scenario, we need to obviously grade that to make sure that you did it. And what we're working on is automation to grade those labs. And as time goes on, you know, obviously we'll uh, have support for, you know, all kinds of different la uh, cloud platforms. Um, and that's something we're working on as well. But, you know, this is huge for us because the lab access thing has always been a huge problem and, and getting labs to work consistently for people. Now we finally got the ability um, at i &E, you know, through all the verticals to do that. It's like super exciting. And I think that, you know, people are going to be blown away because like I said earlier, the learning experience of like just doing it and putting your hands on it is obviously much different than listening to me, you know, with the slide deck and just rambling all day. So you need both. Right. But um, I just can't be more excited about the labs. That's uh, like what we're working on. And, um, you know, there's going to be uh, obviously like different layers, like you know, depending on uh, the certification. And then ultimately, as time goes on, those labs will be within your training experience as well. So imagine watching a course on, you know, something like DevOps and, uh, you know, having somebody like Matt Davis or Brooks or me on the video teaching you something and say, now go click this and do what I just showed you. And here's a challenge along the way. Right. So uh, it's gonna be a lot of fun. And uh, like I said, just super pumped. I think um, on, on that on that piggyback on that, I want to kind of put some numbers to kind of quantify that as Mike talks about like, um, like like you know the new labs and, and putting forth new labs the vision that we share across the entire content team and the vision that we share from richard you know as, as ceo all the way down right is is a migration away from you know effectively this death by powerpoint mantra that is that has plagued kind of the training industry for a while where you sit and you listen to somebody talk uh you know for hours on end on on, on powerpoint slides or on video to, to to get a concept across and we really want to shift that mantra to be well over you know 50 to 60 percent you know that hands-on aspect of the training regardless of what the discipline is and so the teams are very much um pointed in a direction um, that, that you're going to spend a lot of your time getting your hands on the content and getting your hands on the learning objectives that you need to do to be proficient in whatever discipline you happen to, 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 to be going down. Um, and, and that's why we've invested so heavily in the lab content and we've invested heavily into visionaries like Mike who, you know, can bring that vision of what that content would look like in a, in a, in a hands-on type of fashion uh, to, to you all as you consume the content in the future. So um, just wanted to kind of, you know, piggyback on that one as well. Um, Mike, uh, Mike and Richard, one for you as well. This one came through for Victor. It came through as a three-parter, but I'm going to pick um, kind of the, the middle question to ask for, for you two. Predictions for which cloud platform will have the most growth in 22? Mike, you want to hit that one first? Yeah, it's always a good question, right? Um, well, I think we've all probably, anybody that's paying attention to what Amazon is doing, right? A lot of leadership changes in the last couple of years, like Jeff Bezos, 
no longer CEO of Amazon, Andy Jassy, no longer CEO of AWS. And uh, they're growing like crazy, especially through COVID, right? You see like just their stock exploding and the massive amount of employees they've added. Um, and so, you know, I think it's kind of interesting. I think that AWS might have kind of a growth year, maybe some growing pains if uh, we can look at some of the outages from at the end of last year, maybe. Um, but I like what Microsoft's doing. I think they're really moving forward. So you never know what these things, right? Uh, it could go either way. Um, but like, obviously, Amazon, Microsoft, and Google, they're all crushing it. Um, I, I think that, you know, it could be, it could be Microsoft or AWS. I know that, uh, we've talked about, you know, <laughs> you know, I, but nothing against Google, but you know what I mean? Right. Like that one is probably not going to be the, the highest growth one. Um, I think it's between Azure and AWS. I like what Microsoft is doing on their developer tooling. The one leg up that Microsoft's got is they've got a really nice story of making it easy to work with their tools and services, you know? So it's like you use visual studio code and all these plugins. And it starts getting pretty compelling. So I could see Microsoft having a high growth year, especially because of the enterprise, um, mm -hmm. you know, requirements, right? So it'd be interesting for sure. Yeah. Richard, you got uh, an opinion on that one? You want to weigh, on, weigh in on that one? Yeah, I mean, I, to I totally agree. I think on, I, you know, I think it's down between those two. I think one of the one of the things that we are seeing that I think is very interesting is really growth from uh, these kind of one-off cloud providers, uh, something like Linode or. Digital Ocean or these guys, I think that um, I think that's kind of surprising as, as well as kind of having you know some environments for uh, for those. But for sure, I think it's you know it's AWS, Azure for for enterprise for businesses. Um, you know, I think that's I think those it's it's down between those two. I, I I laugh very much when we have the conversation about uh, about Azure, AWS, and GCP because uh, I, I oftentimes equate Azure to be kind of the creeper on the technology field. Uh, Mike, kind of to your point, you see them, you know, sticking in their plugins and, and software X or adopting you know technology Y, and they don't really you know put themselves out there nearly as much as front and center as somebody like AWS does on a lot of stuff. But then next thing you know, you've got your CIO who comes through and says everything has to be on Azure and everything has got to be inside of. Uh, uh, inside of our Azure cloud, and and bam, next thing you know, Azure is the, the the center of the universe. So uh, um, I think I think AWS is still still king of the hill. Um, definitely, uh, I think Azure is always going to be an up and comer. I don't know if it'll ever actually overtake uh, an AWS. And um, again, nothing against GCP, but you know we'll see if they can they can bring their foot into the race at some point in time in the future. Um, uh, with that being said, yep. we are coming to the top. Oh, go, go for it. Go for it, Mike. Absolutely. Sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off there. I just wanted to okay. echo what you said. I, I also think that AWS definitely has the advantage just because of their size, right? They've, yeah. been, they've been at it much longer. So while Microsoft could be a, you know, a surprise in, in what they do this year again, um, I, I could agree with that totally. You know, AWS is like the leader and uh, it's probably not going to change this year. It, it doesn't hurt to, you're probably never going to go wrong to have AWS as, to your point, your kind of anchor anchor cloud yep. technology that you believe on yeah um we are coming up to the top of the hour um i do want to wrap us up here in a little bit we did get a lot of questions actually one last question that came through from victor said are you guys hiring instructors absolutely you can either go to careers.ine.com you can either message myself you can message mike uh, for cloud you can message brian mcgann um, on twitter for networking or you message jack reedy for cybersecurity. we are always 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 looking for passionate passionate people who want to come and share that knowledge with with folks in their discipline and so whether you hit up careers.ine.com even if you don't see a job role there you are free to message myself or any of my my content directors um and and let us know that you are interested in that we'd love love to talk to you with that being said we are at the top of the hour we're going to go ahead and close it off mike i want to turn the floor over to you real quick to give any closing thoughts um and, and welcome you officially publicly on this stream to the INE family yeah. So number one, just want to say thanks for the warm welcome. Um, I love being here. I'm super pumped. And for everybody that's uh, watching, you know, get ready, start warming up, crack your knuckles and uh, do some stretching because we're going to get like, it's going to be intense. We're going to have a lot of fun. It's going to be amazing. So awesome. Thank you guys. Boss, any closing remarks for you? Uh, no, I just want to uh, thanks. Thanks again for uh, Mike joining the team and, and super excited about what the future holds. And I know we've we've had many conversations and, and we are both uh, tech nerds and uh, very proud of that. And, uh, you know, just super excited for for the future here for for cloud and for, you know, our students and, uh, you know, just looking forward to uh, to the road ahead. 
Awesome. Um, I, I want to echo that as well. Obviously, I'm super excited, Mike, that we get to finally talk about it in public and, and, and get to get to welcome you to the team officially. I'm super excited for where we're going on, on cloud. I've seen your your vision and your roadmap, and, and I couldn't be more excited. This wraps up today's stream. Thank you very much for watching. If you did miss it live, look for the replay across all of our social channels as well as on the INE website. Uh, we will be live again right here right here, you know where, tune your, tune your dials in, right here next Tuesday, January 18th, as we sit down with Mike Pfeiffer again. We're going to talk some more stuff. Um, we'll get a chance to learn more about Mike, his journey, work, uh, working from a help desk at a computer company to becoming a successful entrepreneur. We'll go into detail with some of his strategies and examine the cloud industry more in depth, and most importantly, how you can apply lessons learned from Mike to take your cloud journey to the next level. Be sure to like and subscribe on all the social platforms uh, you're using so that you can stay in the loop for when the details of the next stream are. And notifications are turned on so that you know when we go live. As always, bring your questions. And until next time, have a great week and we'll see you later.